Just because we developed the test, it doesn't mean I know how to do a nasopharyngeal swab. Plenty of benefits, not just like that. <laughs> My name is James Green. I'm the Senior Director of R&D and the Head of the Singapore R&D Centre. One of the things we do in R&D is produce new products, whether it be COVID-19 test kits or providing tools to our customers in the pharma industry to support the vaccine efforts. The work that we predominantly do here in Singapore is based on developing the, the PCR test for diagnosing COVID-19. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. It involves a whole family of different instruments to execute the test. The majority of those instruments are actually made and designed here in Singapore by both my team in R&D and the manufacturing team in operations. At the moment, it's a, a rather invasive swab. It's called a nasopharyngeal swab. And that swab is tilting your head back through the nose and back through the nasopharynx with a, with a large swab. And then that swab is broken off into a, what we call a, a transport medium that preserves the virus for later downstream testing. Do you get to like, you test it on yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Just because we developed the test, it doesn't mean I know how to do a nasopharyngeal swab. And I certainly don't think I would like to do that or administer that for sure any of my team, nope. but actually anyone in general for that matter. Plenty of benefits, not just like that. <laughs> the first test that we launched was essentially a three hour time frame. You could get the results for 94 different patients. Now just recently, with the application of different technologies and automation, we can actually test for over 6,000 patients. I'm pretty bullish on the fact that we'll get there with any number of one to multiple solutions of vaccines that will be distributed globally for general use. Early launch could very well be this year for a vaccine or early next year at the latest, but that doesn't mean the general population will have access to that early launch vaccine. Governments around the world will provide those vaccines to the population in need, and whether they be elderly, young, or immunocompromised. And then probably in the second half of 2021, that vaccine will become available to, to every one of us. Essentially, our immune system remembers what it's had in the past to use as a barrier and a recognition factor to determine whether it should fight something off in the future or the present when it's been infected. I think it's important to note that memory is being generated by the human immune system from this infection, but we just don't know how long that will last which again speaks to the efficacy of a vaccine in the general population. You know that we have a flu vaccine every single year, and that's predominantly due to the fact that the virus is changing. What we don't know is how it's gonna be looking for the coronavirus outbreak, and whether or not it will be as promiscuous as the influenza and other RNA viruses. In pretty much any scenario you can think of, in any working environment, there's a chance of catching COVID. And coupled with its ability to transmit very easily between individuals, considering we're all humans and we like to interact, when we think about talking to each other in the office or you know, sitting next to each other on the MRT or on the bus, whatever it might be, it's human nature to interact with each other. It's well documented that frontline health workers are at higher risk which is why they have extensive personal protective equipment and they follow very strict procedure. Now, the diagnostic scientists running the tests, that's not so well documented. And actually, there's no significantly increased risk there, whether you're running a test or not. Sometimes it's not quite so tangible to work in R&D because the products we make are, sometimes they're clear liquids that don't look any different to you know, the drink you get from a vending machine but the chemistry inside and the instruments that run them are truly transformative. We're super fortunate in Singapore to have world-leading engineers and scientists just in the floor below us within R&D. Uh, and I get to work with them every day. And that's something else that I really relish, the ability to see individual scientists and engineers progress, contribute more, and ultimately become more and more proud of their impact on right now, a global pandemic and health crisis. Maybe tomorrow or 2021, something else. And that's the beauty of working at R&D.